In order for you to have, build on, and maintain a website, you're going to need at least a domain name, a web hosting account, and some means of transferring files back and forth between your computer and your website. Now, once you have purchased your domain name and have a web hosting account, you need to assign your domain to that hosting account. That's what we're going to be doing in this video, connecting your domain to your hosting service. Now, when you purchase your web hosting service, you're sent some important information about your hosting account. Usually it's sent to you through an email. Now, among this information is what is called the name servers. These name servers need to be added to your domain name account in order for the internet to know that the domain is yours and this also allows the world to see your soon to be totally awesome website. Now, while this might sound really techy, it's very simple to do as you're about to see. Now, you're gonna need the email or the info that your hosting company sent you when you first purchase their services and you'll need to log into your domain account. Now, let me just give you a couple of examples of of the emails that I had received from the various hosting services that I've been using. For example, here's one for Lunar Pages. And the one that I got from Lunar Pages was a real long email. And in amongst that information was one that said domain name instructions. It was really long. And at some segment in that long email was this little bit of info here titled domain name instructions. And this is the name servers that need to be added to our domain name registrar. And I'll get to that here in just a second. I just want to point out what to look for. Now, some domain name registrars, none that I've ever used, but some of them will require you to also have an IP address along with the name servers. Lunar Pages supplies that to you right here. Some of the other ones that I'm about to show you, not so much. You just kind of got to dig around for them. Now, this one here is one that I got from Namecheap. Now, Namecheap, I also use for domain names, but they've also got a pretty cool and very inexpensive hosting account as well. And this one, again, was a really long email. So you see, I kind of cut out some of the parts here so I can squeeze it into the video here. But in amongst this information was a little segment that said name server information. And as you can see, these guys, kind of like these guys here, starts off with something NS, or as in this case with, with Namecheap, it starts off with DNS1 and then DNS2. Now, most all of them, at least those that I've ever used, only require two name servers. Some of them, though, will require more. I've never encountered those just yet, but, you know, I've only been doing this for about five years. So I'm sure that they're out there because they do offer spaces for them, as you're about to see. And this one here I got from my most recent hosting account called d 9 and they're an awesome group, by the way, but I don't want to get into a sales pitchy thing about this. But anyway, again, a real long email. And one of the segments in here, segment three, gives me the primary name server and the secondary name server. And they also give you the IP addresses here, just like they had noted on the one from Lunar Pages here. But like with Lunar Pages, this one starts off with NS and then 25, NS26, and so on. But again, I only need these two for the domain registrars that I've used. And last but not least, the one that I've got from HostGator, which again is kind of a long email, but not as long as these other ones were. But in amongst some of this information here, they give me the name servers. As you can see here, it starts off with NS like these other ones did, 253, and then the next one or the secondary name server is NS254. So these are the emails that I received over time. So if your hosting account is with one of these companies, then this gives you a better idea as to what to hunt down in the emails. Now, of course, if you don't have these or have no idea where they're at, no big deal. You just need to contact the hosting company that you're using and have them send them to you. And if you've got a pretty decent support system with that hosting company, you might even try calling them up. That might save you some time or just send them an email and call them, however you want to do it, but just get it. And once you get it, make sure that you save it in a place you're going to know where it's at. A little organizational tip there for you. So let's head on over to, let's say, Namecheap, and let me demonstrate where we're going to be changing out our name servers. And once we log in, we're going to come to this page here. Then we come on up here to Domains, go over to My Account, Manage Domains. Let's pick this domain here. And right up here, Domain Name Server Setup. Just click on that. And you'll see here right below that, we've got this option where it says transfer DNS back to us. You're only going to see this if you've already changed the DNS from the default that Namecheap adds whenever you first purchase the domain from them to another web hosting service, which I've already done. But let's go ahead and click on this. 
as you can see I've already moved this particular domain over to the D9 hosting service and these are the two name servers that were sent to me in that email that I just showed you earlier so depending upon your hosting account and the information they gave you in that email you'd want to just enter those here the primary or the first one or the lower number in that sequence if they give you one that has different numbers like if it's NS1 or NS2 NS1 goes here NS2 goes here or in this case 25 then 26 then click on save changes and you're done that's simple let's check out name silo it's another domain name registrar that I use then once I log in at name silo, I end up at a page like this. Come on over to domain manager. And you can see right here where I've got a list of all the domains. One of the categories right here is the name servers that are assigned to this particular domain already. So let's go ahead and check that box. At which point these guys up here are highlighted. I come on up here and click on change name servers. Again, pretty simple so far. And then right here is where we enter the primary name server and the secondary name server that again was sent to you in their email and with name silo they also give me an option to add an additional layer of security called domain defender so before any changes take part here I can have things set up to where there's a question that I've established along with the appropriate answer and then once that's entered properly then click on submit right here and then the changes will take effect and there you go see how easy that was and completely painless now it's just a matter of time depending upon your web hosting service the internet might be able to see your domain in a couple of minutes or as most hosting companies will tell you between 24 and 72 hours before your domain is able to be seen on the web as well as you not being able to access the control panel for that domain so you should always, always, always figure that it will take eh, at the most three days before you can see your website so that when you can actually see it in under 10 minutes, which with me has been most of the time, you will be much more happier than, you know, the other way around. So plan on it taking three days and it will more than likely only take a few minutes rather than you planning on it taking a few minutes and it ends up taking three days. So that's the end of this video on name servers and connecting your domain to your web hosting account. Thanks for watching and you have a great day.